we're going to start by talking about some things that have been going down in SeaWorld and how it can relate to your health and, and what your health goals are. We're going to talk about the five pitfalls to poor health. I think in order to get some solutions, we first have to know what we've been doing wrong with our health, some areas that you may want to look out for and, and really get some insights. Oh, I need to change this. I need to change that. I need to start doing that. This is where we go to the five ancient solutions in our modern world. Right? A lot of times with Native Path, we look backwards, actually, to the health of our ancestors, the way they ate, the moved, the lived, and learn how to apply that in the present setting. And then we're going to talk about what the Native Body Reset is. If you're someone who wants to overcome those health challenges and do it in the easiest, most effective way, and really go, go on a path of transformation, right? really join the path, get on the path, stay on the path, transformation style, that's the data body reset. So we're going to talk about what that is, and how that can help you. Again, we'll have some live Q and A's at the end, and a very special webinar offer as a way of saying thank you for joining us today. So that's on the agenda. Let's go ahead and get started, and let's talk about what was going on with Shamu's floppy fin. So maybe you guys remember, like a few years ago, there was a lot of stuff happening at SeaWorld with orcas, and uh, you know, orcas started getting sick. The orcas started like attacking trainers. And this other thing I started noticing uh, with the orcas was like, they were all having these like floppy fins, right? And it was it was like puzzling to the trainers, puzzling to the uh, food scientists and, and everybody who's helping out with the orcas at SeaWorld, like what's going on? Because the floppy fin thing doesn't really happen when orcas are out in nature. So they started investigating, like, why, why is this happening, right? And, and they found like there's some key reasons. And, and one of them was the orca's diet. And the diet that they were eating, you know, at SeaWorld was full of like processed refined stuff and grains. And it wasn't really providing a lot of vit vitamins and minerals like they would get out in, in nature. And they found that, that the nutrition of the, the quality of nutrition of the food they were getting was so diminished, it was impacting the quality of their own tissue, their cartilage, right? So the cartilage in the in the fin was getting weaker and it was easier to now bend, right? The other thing is uh, they were only swimming in one direction in the tank, right? So rather than getting forces on both sides of the fin to where it would be balanced, right? They're only swimming in one direction. So force was only coming on one side, right? Of the fin. And because it was weak with new, poor nutrition and because the force was always coming on one side of the fin, it eventually started bending over, right? And then I mentioned the attacks that were happening right, um, to the trainers, right, because what they realized was in, in nature, um, the orcas are quite happy, they never attack humans for any reason, but something was going on with, with them being isolated that caused them to do that, and one more thing is that they stopped swimming into deep depths like they would in the ocean, They're, they were swimming in a very shallow tank, right, in the ocean, they're able to swim very much, much deeper, 100 meters, 200 meters deeper, right, and that force is also something because of uh, Wolf's law, basically tissues will get harder by the greater the force, right? The, the tissue was weaker because of nutrition as well. And now it's starting to bend over, right? So we have, we have an orca in captivity that was getting sick, that was getting emotional outbursts and angry and starting attacking trainers, but also a physical deformity because of the environment, right? And in nature, right? When, when orcas are out in the ocean, you very rarely ever see these floppy fins. You see happy orcas free of a lot of these diseases they were experiencing inside the tank, right? And it's a really great um, reminder, or I should say illustration, of how the environment can truly impact what's going on with a, with a species, right? With what's going on with a creature, right? Why is that creature having those problems? A lot of the times we say it's genetics, but more often than not, it's the way our genetics are being expressed in our environment, right? Very important to know. And we want to think about this because humans in the same way, in the very same way, um, like the orcas are living in an orca tank, humans have been living in a human tank, far removed from the way that they have been eating, moving, and living for hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of years, right? And we're living under fluorescent lights. We're eating processed and refined foods. We're looking down at our phones, the way we've eaten, the way we've moved, the way we've lived has radically, radically trained, changed over the past few thousand years, but especially, especially over the last hundred years, the last hundred years has been a, a huge change in all of those things. And to point out some stats that really 
show the impact of this, you know, and how it, how it's really contributing to a lot of our problems. Look at this, right? Chronic disease rates in 1930, 7.5% of the people. Year 2000, it's impacting 45% of the people. 2020, 65% of the people, right? Chronic disease has been getting worse and worse and worse despite all our advances in technology, despite all our advances in medicine, fancy hospitals, all these, these things, right? Something is going on, right? Why is that getting worse, right? Look at deaths from cancer, 1810, 0.5% of the deaths. 2010, it's accounting for 31% of the deaths. Why, why is that going up? What's happening there? Heart disease, the first recorded heart attack was in 1912. Now it's the number one killer in America. What's going on? The guy who first came up with a cardiogram was told you should not, you, well, what's the point of that machine? No one has any heart problems. Now it's the number one killer in America. What's going on, right? Why is that getting worse? Obesity rates, 1970, 10% of the people. 2018, 42% of the people. And these, these stats, these are before the pandemic. All of this has gotten way worse since the pandemic, right? Obesity has gone up. Childhood obesity has gone up. Diabetes rates, 1950, 1% of the population, right? 2020. 10% of the population, 33% of us are pre-diabetic. What is going on? What is going on? These aren't genetics. This is something going on with our environment. Mental illnesses, one in six Americans take a psychiatric drug now. Just like orcas are getting angry and attacking people and having emotional issues. Same thing happens to humans when they live in a human tank, right? 30 million Americans are on antidepressants, SSRIs. Depression rates have increased 60% in teens, right? Look on the phone, Instagram, lots of comparisons totally changing the way teens are, are behaving, right? So all this is affecting us in the major way. And for the first time in the history or in the past hundred years, maybe thousands of years, life expectancy is now going down, right? So we just think, oh, it's getting better and better and better. We hit this tipping point now where the way we've been living is caught up and now life expectancy is starting to go down. And uh, that that is concerning, right? That's very concerning. And the reason why I bring all this up is because it hasn't always been this way, right? When, when humans were eating, moving, and living in harmony with their biology, they were virtually free of all the diseases that plague us today, right? They were challenged by infectious diseases. They were challenged by eating by lions, tigers, and bears, right? Um, but when it comes to chronic diseases that, that are affecting us, they were virtually free of that, right? So we want to really take note of that. And the best account for the health of our ancestors was from a guy named Weston Price. If you haven't heard of Weston Price, I highly recommend that you check him out. Um, but learning about Weston Price was the thing that changed my view of what was happening, right? I was working in a conventional medical system. As a doctor of physical therapy, I worked in hospital settings uh, that were you know, designed to treat heart disease. I worked in neurological settings, at home health settings, at outpatient settings. I saw every single angle from, from conventional health, right? And this blew me away when I learned about this, because Weston Price was a dentist at the early part of the 20th century. And he lived in an interesting time because during that time, there were technology and, and industry was starting to really become advanced and food, the food industry was changing. The medical industry was changing. And the way we, the foods we were starting to eat were, were radically changing. So he went, went around the world and he studied 17 indigenous cultures, uh, I believe during his time. And it was an interesting time because he would, he would study these people that were living, eating, moving in their native ways and the way, the way they have been for thousands of years. But then he would also um, research people living down the road with the exact same genetic profile, but had adapted themselves to modern world foods, right? They were eating white flour, white sugar, and, and living in a more modern civilized way and compared people with the same genetics to who were living in their native ways. And what he found was people that were living in their native ways, eating their native foods, right? Were virtually free of all these chronic diseases. You can see these Aborigines at the bottom. These guys never did like a crunch or a workout any day in their life. Uh, they, they never counted a calorie, They but <laughs> completely ripped and in shape, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old, still moving around, still squatting, still carrying things. But the way they were living was in harmony with their biology. Right? They were doing what their genes were expecting of them. And then he was able to serve people living down the road who were eating white flour, white sugar, and they had all kinds of chronic diseases. And not only that, they had crooked teeth, they had problems with fertility. Um, 
And, and he was able to make that comparison, right? So 17 different cultures, all free of the modern chronic diseases that we're having today, but they ate according to the, what their native diets were. And that's important to know because they didn't all eat the same things, right? Some of them had more protein and fat, like those in no, more Northern climates, because that's what the earth was providing for them. They had more protein and more fat and less carbohydrates, less fruit. And he would observe people living closer to the equator who were eating more fruits and more vegetables and maybe less animal-based protein, but also free of these chronic diseases. It's only with the introduction of these modern foods with white flour, white sugar, toxic fats, did he start to see chronic diseases set in. And not only that, like I mentioned, crooked teeth. This is, he, remember, he was a dentist, so he was in, interested in like, what's going on with the teeth. Why are my patients having all those cal cavities? He didn't see them in native people. He saw them in people eating modern foods, right? So it's really important to know because he showed us that truly, if we obey the laws of nature, nature is going to take care of us. And uh, these chronic diseases that we're having largely coming from our environment, right? So let's talk about the five pitfalls to poor health, because it's really important that we point out, you've got to call out where, and this is not our fault, like human society, the way we've been eating in our culture, the way we all brought up, we're all brought up, the things we're all told. There's a lot of things that are wrong. There's a lot of lies. There's a lot of bad information. There's a lot of beliefs that we have to overcome. Mainly, it's all my genetics. This runs in my family. Maybe it's just the environment. Maybe it's just the family has been eating the same foods generation after generation. We have to really think about those things and create awareness around it. Let's talk about the five pitfalls to poor health poor health and, and what you can do about it, right? So number one, number one thing that's getting us in trouble is, is sugar and ultra processed foods. Added sugar is in almost everything, right? The food industry puts sugar in damn near everything you eat, everything you, everything you drink, right? If they're selling something, they're putting sugar in there because they know it tastes a little better. And you're, when, it, when, you're, when it goes up into your brain, it sets off this this hormone called leptin that, that, that kind of messes with your satiety and it just wants more and more and more and more. It's different from uh, satiating foods, right? Like you eat a chicken breast or a broccoli, you, you have one and it's good. You have another one and it's like, it's pretty good, but it's not as good as the first bite, right? When you have food industry stuff, processed and refined stuff, and they'll even say this on the label, I bet you can't have just one. You're no match for those foods. They literally have food scientists in labs whose sole job is to get you to really like a food and it's a fake food and to get you to eat more and more and more and more of it. And these foods often have extremely low nutrition, but they'll put health label on those foods and call it low fat or low calorie, right? It's so really important to know that we're being lied to already by these fake ultra processed refined foods. And also a lot of these foods, it's just different versions of corn, soy, and wheat. They, you, you've gone on plane trips, you've seen mono agriculture, right? You look down on the ground, you see one crop that's growing. They kill off everything else and they grow corn, soy, and wheat and sugar. And they'll turn these things into processed and refined foods with loads and loads of sugar. They'll turn corn into sugar with fructose, high fructose corn syrup, right? And they, they use them to make all these refined foods, but the core of it is added sugar. Added sugar is something you really have to watch out for. And look at this diagram down here. Look at the added sugar in the beverages, right? Liquid beverages. When, it, when a sugar comes in a liquid form as, as opposed to whole real food form, it has significantly less sugar. And whole real food, like a banana or a peach or a strawberry, not only does it have less sugar, but it has fiber in it, which slows the release of sugar into your bloodstream. These extremely dense liquid forms of sugar go into your bloodstream very, very rapidly, cause a lot of insulin to be produced in your pancreas. And that's a big problem. And we're going to talk about that, what that does, because it sets you up for hyperinsulinemia, right? So you, what, what you're seeing here is what's called a, an iceberg schematic, right? On the, on the, if you were on the, on the top of the ocean, look on the water, looking at the top, you saw four different icebergs, right? one for heart disease, one for hypertension, one for diabetes, one for obesity. It looks like it's all these separate things. But if you were to go underneath the water, you'd see it's all just one big iceberg, right? And that's come from hyperinsulinemia. It's one of the root causes of our health issues in our culture. And it comes from the over, mainly comes from the overconsumption of sugar, of refined carbohydrates, right? So what's happening is we're eating this sugar gets broken down into glucose in our bloodstream 
And that sends a, sig a big signal to our pancreas to start producing insulin to clear the function of insulin is to clear at that point is to clear the bloodstream of sugar, right? Take it over to your cells in exchange for energy. But when you have too much glucose in, in the in the bloodstream, that causes the pancreas to start producing a whole lot of insulin. That's what we call it, hyperinsulinemia, right? That overproduction where the insulin is, is getting the glucose molecule, it's trying to put it in your cells, but there's just, there's so much, it has to go somewhere and store itself as fat because it can't put it in your cells anymore. There's too much glucose. That's a problem when your blood sugar is consistently high. That happens from refined carbohydrates. That happens with sugar in, in your liquids. That happens with sugar in your, in your salad dressings. They put it in everything because they know that you're going to get addicted and they know you're going to come back for more, right? So hyperinsulinemia which is again, coming from refined carbohydrates is the core thing that's leading to heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. If, if, a, if a client or patient is coming to me and they have any of those things, I know, I, I've been a physical therapist, I've seen their homes. I, I watch what happens when they go in there, they're eating too many refined carbohydrates for where they're at, right? And it's really important to know that. And that doesn't necessarily mean a low carb diet, right? But it, do, it does mean these refined foods, right? With added sugar, these, these uh, liquid carbohydrates are problematic. So hyperinsulinemia is one of the, one of the main problems here. Second pitfall is toxic fats. And before I even get into this, I'm just going to say that we have been extremely lied to about fats. Doctors have been misinformed about fats and what's truly causing heart disease from a, from a dietary fat perspective. Saturated fat does not cause heart disease. I'm going to say it again. Saturated fat does not cause heart disease. Fats like coconut oil and butter and ghee and tallow, those, those are not giving people heart disease. What's giving people heart disease from a fat consumption standpoint are these industrial vegetable seed oils, the things that mono agriculture comes out of. They take that corn, they take that soy, they take that wheat, they, they take all those things, they turn it into industrial seed oils. Right. And these seed oils are highly toxic under heat, extremely inflammatory to the body. They cause free radical damage. It sets you up for a whole host of diseases. Almost every restaurant uses these. These is this is what we were told was heart healthy when we were growing up. This is what doctors were recommending. And it was part of the problem. And there's some very bad, flawed studies. You can look up a guy named Ansel Keys back in the 60s and 50s, some very manipulative studies that made fat, specifically saturated fat, to be the enemy. And it made sugar, carbohydrates, and to be the focus of what we're eating. That right there got us into big trouble. But because we've been over-consuming these toxic fats that we've been told are heart healthy, it's leading to other health issues, mainly inflammatory issues, right? Which leads to things like stroke, heart disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I had so many patients never had a drop of alcohol in their life. Their livers were messed up. Type 2 diabetes, all kinds of cancers. All kinds of cancers can come from inflammatory um, industrial seed oils. And to give you another idea here, inflammation, not all, I have insulinemia up there, but inflammation is at the root of a lot of these issues too, right? I mentioned diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease. It doesn't stop there. Alzheimer's disease, arthritis. You know, anytime you see the, anytime you see the word itis, like arthritis, gastritis, meningitis, anything with itis ending, no, you just, that means inflammation. Inflammation is at play. Inflammation largely comes from the consumption of industrial seed oils. And it's what's making our joints hurt. It's what's contributing to a lot of our autoimmune diseases, neurological diseases. So it impacts us in a very big way. Again, we tend to think of all these things as separate issues, right? We tend to be told, you drive down the, the road, you get to see a billboard that says, does this run in your family? And it gets you believing there's nothing you can do about it, right? But again, the family's eating the same foods, the doctor's eating the same foods, and no one can quite see it. You've got to get yourself out of a room of strong perfume in order to smell fresh air again, right? So that's why I'm a big fan of doing resets and, and, and changing the way you eat for at least 30 days and seeing how you feel, right? Inflammation at the core of a lot of these issues. Number three pitfall is gut irritating foods. And by gut irritating, what I mean by that is there are foods out there that have proteins in them that can actually poke holes in your intestinal lining, right? When they poke holes in the intestinal lining, that, that allows foreign substances, things that aren't supposed to pass through the intestinal lining, to get into your bloodstream. And those are called foreign invaders, foreign protein invaders. They get in your bloodstream, and that can set up a whole host 
of uh, inflammatory issues, a lot of autoimmune type disease issues, right? But there's certain foods like grains, legumes, and dairy that have the potential, especially grains with gluten, to poke that hole in your intestinal lining and compromise the intestinal barrier. And when that happens, it impacts your ability to digest and eliminate toxins. But also, as I mentioned, the foreign proteins can get in there and it can set off a whole host of symptoms, right? Grains with gluten are, the, are a huge problem. Beans, legumes, not as big of a problem, but still something that can be harmful that I recommend taking away for 30 days and seeing. Milk, sp specifically conventional milk, that's low fat, that's been homogenized, that's been pasteurized, probably a big problem. But milk, and milk has a spectrum, right? On the other end, you have raw milk that hasn't been touched at all. We've been told that's highly problematic because of infections and stuff, and that's not saying that's not a concern, but it's much less of a problem than the low fat milk, right? That, that has been homogenized and pasteurized and, and very much just sugar left over, right? So, and it can pull holes in the intestinal linings. The quality of the milk matters and it's kind of a gray area. Some people do well in milk, some people don't do well at all. To find out, take it out for 30 days and see. Take out grains, legumes, and dairy for 30 days and see what happens when you stop eating gut irritating foods. You might be surprised, it can be pretty powerful. So. That's the, that's the third pitfall. And, and what, what do we produce, produce a lot of in mono agriculture? Beans, wheat, milk, right? Those things right there. But our native ancestors did not, did not eat any grains of any kind. And if they had any milk, it came in the adolescent days, right? So some things to think about, right? Disease begins in the gut, just like hyperinsulinemia and inflammation led to a whole host of diseases. Right? When you have problems in the gut, it can lead to autoimmune disease. It can lead to anxiety, depression. There's a huge connection between the gut and your brain, your mood, how you feel, the serotonin, the dopamine. That's produced in the gut. It just goes up to the brain, right? Irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory, you know, fatty disease, all these issues in the gut. What are we eating? When's the last time your doctor ever asked you, like, what are you actually eating that's contributing to this? Skin issues, right? Many people have rashes and all kinds of things going on almost always a, a gut component to that, something that you're eating. Hormone imbalances, right? Can really become from a, a leaky gut. Chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, the things that like the doctors are like, I don't know, I don't know. It's like, we, we gotta look at the gut. We gotta heal it. We gotta seal it. It's another reason why collagen is so important because it seals the gut lining, but we gotta stop eating foods that are problematic, right? Number four, and this is where the physical therapist in me, the one who loves to loves fitness and exercise, wants to remind everybody that we're designed to move. The best reason to move is because you can, right? And in our society, they're giving us all these comforts to just sit there and not do anything. Like we don't even have to go to the grocery store anymore. We just go on our phone and call Amazon. Like we can just sit right there and it's, it's making it really easy for us to not move, right? And what's happening some of you all know, I, I used to work in the outpatient clinic. I used to see people with neck pain and back pain and herniated this. And I thought I was going to see people who got into car accidents or sport accidents or something like that. Nope. Most people, and I say most like 99% of the people just sat there all day. They just sat there. And over time, their bodies would kind of conform to that sitting position. Their heads would go forward. Their shoulders would start to round. Their hips would be you know, always flexed and bent. Their knees would be bent. So they would have a hard time straightening it out. They'd have a hard time standing up, right? And all of a sudden, certain muscles were getting tightened and certain muscles were getting weakened and their butts were kind of getting really weak because they were just sitting on all the time. And then... They, both, they heard a disc trying to pick something up. And then the surgeon would say, oh yeah, we got a surgery for that, right? And it's another thing in our culture, this conventional healthcare, real quick for medication, real quick for surgeries, right? And there's a system here. There's a medical system that makes a lot of money keeping you invested in this sick care system. I say sick care system because it's not really about your health. It's not getting to the root issues. It's getting to the symptom issues. We got to get to the root issues. One of them is the sedentary lifestyle. We have got to get up and moving. And then the last one, loneliness and disconnection. I have to say like, you know, we have a, we have a chat here at Native Path. Customers are always sending messages to us. I am blown away by the amount of people sending messages to us, telling us how lonely they are and how depressed they are. And what makes me really sad about it is a lot of these people, they're not like, 30, 40, it's in their later lives, in their 60s and 70s, 80s. They're spending their last golden years 
lonely and isolated and anxious and, and, and not happy. And that, that hurts me. I used to go see a lot of patients um, in nursing homes and uh, saw that. And I don't, I don't want people to be lonely. I don't, I don't think that's not what we're designed for. You know, um, I, I don't know if you ever read the book Tribe. He talks about Native Americans at the time when white colonials came over. And, and uh, there, in that time period, there were lots of cases where white colonials would go live with Native Americans and Native Americans would go live with white colonials. And there's many accounts of these Native Americans who went to go live with white colonials. Almost always, they would, they would, they would choose to go back and live with Native people, right? Where they were in a tribe, where they were you know, doing things together, eating, hunting, telling stories around a fire, even though there were harsher environments. They chose to live in that area. And those white colonials that would go live with Native Americans, I think Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner, right? They chose to just stay there. Most of the time, they just chose to stay there because they really they found something new and it connected to the way that hum the human species, your DNA, your genetics have been living for thousands and thousands of years. So I really feel like a lot of our loneliness, a lot of our disconnection and our mental issues because of it is because of we're, we're not living in support of one another anymore. We're not living in communities. We're not receiving support. We're being more and more isolated on our phones and it's happening more and more because of things like the, like the pandemic, right? So that concerns me. So that, that's another thing I think is contributing to the mental health and, and, our, and our joy and our happiness, right? We need to think about that in our model of health, right? It's a really important thing to think about. So what I'm here to talk about more than anything else is to get you in action, right? I wanna get you aware of what's been happening, but more than that, from this point on, I wanna start coaching you and giving you the tools to get on the path and stay on the path and really take responsibility for your life, right? Because we can't depend on, whew, we cannot depend on big pharma to help us anymore. We cannot depend on insurance companies to help us anymore. I mean, I've been listening to a lot of stuff lately just to break even, doctors are having to see far more patients. You might've noticed this, they're getting less and less time with you, right? They're just having to write scripts and they're not asking you these things, right? They're not getting to the root of your issues. So what I'm here to do is help you fix yourself, empower you to fix yourself, get rid of all that, those old foods, start eating new foods, start eating, moving, living in harmony with your biology and take action. That's what we wanna do. And one of the best ways to do that is keep looking in the past for the where ancestors lived, start doing those things, start tweaking those things, find the thing that works for you and, and, and make it a lifestyle, all right? So the number one thing, the number one thing that you can do is clean out your fridge, clean out your pantry, get rid of all the refined and processed foods, go grocery shopping and replace it with nothing but whole real foods. And by that, I mean quality meats, vegetables, a little bit of fruit, some nuts and some seeds, maybe a little bit of starch, but nothing with sugar in there, right? You really got to reset the system. You've got to get rid of that little stuff. And I'm going to give you some eating tips right here. When you're eating, build your plate around the protein. Make sure you have protein there every time. Animal-based protein is the most nutrient dense. It's the most satiating. It's the one that's going to, you want to build your plate around, especially for your first meal of the day. Have some animal-based protein, put some vegetables around there. Keep it so simple. Like you really got to get yourself some wins, especially those first three days. What else can you have? Some vegetable, like I mentioned, vegetables, broccoli, carrots, spinach, squash, zucchini, you know, some fruit, some berries, some strawberries, maybe a little bit of banana, some nuts and seeds, some almonds, some cashews, some walnuts, pecans, little things to snack on. And a little bit of starch, some sweet potatoes are good. Maybe just a little bit of rice, but I'm not, you know, just keep it simple early on, especially if you're trying to overcome health issues. But that sugar, can't let it in there. Can't let it in there. Got to, got to also get rid of the chips and the crackers and all that stuff and just focus on whole real food. This is the one thing, if you did nothing else for like 10 days, you would see dramatic improvements in all of your health issues if you're coming from a place of, of having a refined diet. So that's, that's the number one thing, right? Number two is to improve your hydration. And that means drinking water, coffee, and tea, and also not putting sugar in there, right? Sometimes we have habits of just, I'm just going to put a sugar here, should put a sugar here. You know, every morning in your coffee after a year, that's a lot of sugar. This coffee is starting first thing in the day with sugar that spikes your, spikes your blood sugar. You don't want to do that. And you don't want to drink the juices. You don't want to drink the sodas. You know, juices it's like a big 
bolus of sugar in liquid form that gets in your bloodstream so fast. And you're getting, you're getting sold on, oh, the vitamin C and in, in, in the orange juice is really good for you. Great, eat an orange, you know, but don't drink the sugar. Don't, don't drink it. Don't drink the apple juice. That, that is one of the worst things you can do, right? Drink water, coffee, and tea with no sugar. And when it comes to water, drink about half your body weight and ounces of water every day. That's a really good rule of thumb. Drink water first thing in the morning. Um, try to have it about 30 minutes after your meals and 30 minutes before your meals, right? Last water two hours before bed. That one thing right there can change your skin, can change your joints, can get your energy up, can improve your digestion. Amazing things when you happen, when you just drink water. And there's all kinds of tips for coffee and tea. You don't want to go crazy on coffee. Just put some collagen in there, some MCT, a little bit of almond milk. You're good to go, right? It doesn't need to be uh, sugar and honey and uh, processed and refined stuff, you know? And like I said about milk, it's a gray area, but to find out if it's a gray area, take it out for 30 days. And then you'll notice like, whoa, I took away the milk. Now I feel fantastic. You do not need milk for strong bones. Strong bones come from sunshine, um, you know, vitamin D, things like collagen, magnesium. That's where strong bones come from and weight bearing exercise. So, and here, right, here's, a, here's another thing I try to do. Keep it simple, right? It's a simple matter of eat this and don't eat that. Eat this, don't eat that. This is a little thing from our, our Native Body Reset, 30-day challenge, right? 30-day reset. And we, we make it simple with easy guides. And this is something we have people print up. You can just print this up, put it on your fridge, and just reminds you, this is what goes in my pantry. This is what goes in my fridge. This does not. And I'm making a commitment. I keep looking at it. And you reprogram yourself. You reprogram yourself to eat good foods. Number three, we can't sit there anymore. We got to get moving. And and who, no matter who you are, you can get moving on some level, right? Um, the easiest thing for people to do, and this kind, this is a kind of a hack because you can fix your hormones and improve your sleep by doing this one thing. And that's waking up and walking with morning rise, sunrise walks and sunset walks. If you're outside and present, for sunrise walks and sunset walks, it has a huge impact on getting your rhythmic hormones, your circadian rhythm aligned with the nature of the sun, right? In the time of the day and light and darkness. Those have huge impacts on what happens to your physiology. Because what's what's been going on with our culture is we're sleeping not according to the sun. We're staying up after the sun, looking at phones, looking at big bright screens, and it tricks our body our eyes and our nervous system into thinking the sun is still up. And when, that, when, the, when the system thinks that, it's still producing daytime hormones, it's not producing nighttime hormones, and it impacts our sleep. And when our sleep is messed up, it impacts weight gain, it impacts our mood, and it sets us up for a whole host of diseases, right? It's really hard to lose weight and be happy if you're not sleeping well. One of the best things you can do is start aligning your body with the sun. Okay, walking outside first thing in the morning and in the evening, and then, I have something to share with you. I mentioned I'm a physical therapist, movements, I think. We have a 30-day workout program that you can just follow along with, right? Videos. And it's made, it's not made for top-tier athletes. It's just made for joint health, right? I call it body hygiene, spinal hygiene. You kind of brush your teeth so you don't get cavities. There's things that you can do to stand up with your posture and get that right and feel good in your body again. So number four, and I already mentioned it, but you got to focus on your sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Be so picky about your sleep. Protect your sleep, you know? Black out your curtains. Go to bed at the same time all, every, every night, you know? And, and be smart with supplementation, like our collagen PM. That's wonderful. It has GABA and L-theanine and just a little bit of melatonin, like things that'll help you sleep, go to sleep naturally rather than relying on maybe wine or some over-the-counter thing or some ambient thing. I know a lot of people are on these medical prescription, pharmaceutical grade sleep aids that don't really help you get good sleep, right? We wanna get you back in your normal natural state. When was the last time you woke up feeling refreshed and energized, ready to do all those things? That's what you're designed for, right? We gotta get back to that. Number five, I'm a people person. Support the people, support the people in your lives, check in on people and create your own tribe, right? Be, be that type of person who, who goes around and, and one, one thing I like to imagine is on everybody, they have a sign that says, help me feel important right? Help other people feel important and serve people, create a tribe, create a community of people that are aligned with similar values. And that is getting back in the tribe that, that, that lights you up. Right. And, and we have one in, in native path. We have, if you haven't joined it, go to, go to Facebook in our native path, private community. We have 
over, I think, 51,000 people that are online, that are supporting each other. It's one big community. You need to be a part of that if you're not already, right? So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Stay. We're going to give you, every, all of you, free access to our Native Body 30-day challenge, right? Free access, right? So Rachel is going to put a link in the, in the poll here, in the questions in the chat. And that's going to give you free access. All you have to do is enter your name and your email address, and we're going to email you an entire program with it goes into more detail of everything I told you. But more importantly, than that it gives you all the support that you need to succeed to make this easy, right? So you're going to get a step by step approach with daily nutrition and whole health guidelines. We have a number of guides that go into detail about these are the foods you should be eating. These are the, not the foods you should be eating. These are the fats you should be cooking with. These are the fats you should not be cooking with. And it's different according to heat, right? We also make it really easy with shopping list. We brought in a professional cook. All the food is amazing. Um, there's things for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, there's things for snacking, um, but it's so good and it's so easy, right? And more importantly than that, with the meal plans, we're trying to, we're going to show you how to make this lifestyle affordable and super simple, no matter how much time you have, um, no matter what's going on with you, right? And the other nice thing you can do is use a journal to track your food and really see how you're reacting along the way, right? There's also going to be a movement support section. So we're going to email you every day for 30 days. You're going to have some information. Usually there's a video of me, um, giving you some sort of inspiration or food tip. And at the bottom of all those videos is another video where you can, you can punch play and do a, a 15 to 20 minute workout with me with no equipment, right? In the privacy of your own home, literally just me and you working on things that can make you feel better, that can lift you up. So that comes with this free program where you just enter your name and your email address. And then of course, there's, there's community support. You can literally um, interact with our whole community, ask lots of questions, Coach Rachel is in there every single day, supporting, inspiring you. You're going to see lots of other people doing this with you. This is kind of a fall reset. Uh, what we're doing here at Native Path is to, to get people finishing the year 2022 strong. You know, start imagining the way you want to look going into Thanksgiving. Imagine the way you want to look being with your family going around Christmas. You know, going in 2023 already you know, 15 to 20 pounds down or whatever you want, already off medications, right? So do it with people, join the path in your journey with people who are doing it with you. You'd be amazed at what the support can do because it keeps you inspired and it gives you an opportunity to support others along the way, because that, that's where it ultimately goes to. You go through this 30 day process and you feel amazing and you get all these great results. And then you inspire someone else who's starting out on day one. Right. And this program that we've had going on, we've had started with a called what's called the Paleo Secret 30 Day Challenge. This is, this is how my wife and, and my business partner, Chris, started this company. It's just a 30 day reset. We have, we have had hundreds of thousands of people go through this program. It absolutely works. And it's so very simple. And we're giving away for free because we want you to have it. Right. I don't I'm so I'm so damn fed up with the conventional healthcare system at this point, right, to be honest with you. And, and what I've seen and what I witnessed. I mean, to tell you, my first job ever was at Houston, Texas, Methodist Hospital that was world renowned for its treatment of heart disease. And the first floor was in McDonald's, right? That's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an unconscious society. We have to get out of that system. We have to create our own system. We have to get out of the room of toxicity, right? And, and this 30 day challenge is the way to do that. So you're going to have the support to stay inspired and do all these great things, right? Again, all of this is free. Um, you don't have to do anything. Again, we're putting a link in the chat, enter your name, your email address. You're immediately going to be emailed all the, all the resources. Go ahead and download each one. You can print things out if you want. You can save it on your phone. You can save it on your laptop, save it on your computer, whatever you want to do. But the resources are always there. Okay. Again, that's in the chat. So I've been talking forever. I think we have some questions. Uh, so we have some things in the chat and the Q&A. But now's a good time. If you have any questions for me, just go ahead and put in the Q&A. Is there a supplement that would reduce sugar cravings? This is from Regina. I know I'm an addict to junk food. So the best thing to do to fight off sugar cravings um, is to combat it with protein and fat, right? So the best supplement to do that would be MCT. And this is why I'm such a big fan of starting your day with protein and fat because it, it helps regulate the way your blood sugar is going to go the rest of the day. If you start the day um, with with, with, with sugar, you're going to be dependent on sugar for your next meal. You're going to have a big spike in energy and blood sugar, and then you're going to have a crash, a big spike 
and a crash, big spike and a crash. Started with protein and fat, i.e. collagen and MCT. You won't get that big spike. You'll get just a little hump and a little dip. And you'll be a lot longer without having the craving. The other thing is get rid of that stuff out of your house. You're no match for junk food. You're no match. The scientists do a very good job. So you've got to get rid of some of the stuff. And that's why we're big fans of, of getting rid of it. Um, yes, Regina, being part of a community is super duper, super duper helpful. And let's see what Luke's got here. Other questions, thoughts on sparkling water? So Leanne, Leanne that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I used to think it was okay, but I've seen so many people who have come to me and said, hey, you know, Chad, what's, I've got this stomach ache. Like what's going on? And, and we start investigating, usually they're eating good things, but sparkling water, mineral water, stuff like that, it tends to, uh, the bubbles can disrupt the digestive system. So if you're looking for something with minerals in it, maybe look for something with minerals without problematic bubbles. And this is another thing, sometimes you don't know what, how it's impacting your digestive system until you take it out for 30 days and put it back in. So during the 30 day reset, I'm a big fan of only eating clean foods, only drinking clean water, coffee and tea for 30 days, seeing how that feels. Now I would say don't have any sparkling water because a lot of things can be cleared up that you, you didn't even know that were going on until you, until you got rid of it. So I love sparkling water like Pellegrino. It has, yeah, it has great minerals. You just gotta be careful with it. You just gotta watch it. Let's see, one of the questions I joined a year ago and got the materials. So I did not need those again, unless they're different. So yeah, same materials as last year. But um, Pedro, if you sign up again, I believe what that will do is kickstart the email sequences. So if you want the email sequences that kind of keep you active every day, because it, it gets kind of fun, right? Like there's set, there's, we all join today and there's a one week period where you just wait and you get prepared for this 30 day challenge. And then there's a day one email, a day two email and a day three. So it sort of speaks to you about in that way. Anything I can do about healing the nervous system. So, so Doris, one thing we want to make sure you're doing is not having any of those toxic fats, right? The industrial seed oils like corn oil, safflower oil, those things absolutely have to stop because those are the things that are damaging the nervous system, right? After that, having good quality uh, proteins and amino acids are going to be very, very helpful, right? So again, collagen is one of the best things you can start having there to repair any damage that's going on to your tissue. That's why it's such a big thing. And uh, if you, I always say, if you're dealing with any health issues, try to have about 20 grams of collagen a day. And then after that, Doris, what I would recommend is movement, movement, moving those nerves, extending the joints. You know, your, your nerves have you got the spinal cord, this brain, and from that you have bundles of nerves going to your arms and your legs. And a lot of the times we get problems in our nervous system because things just are stuck because the, it's almost like it's calcified because the body hasn't moved enough. So I mentioned this because I'm a, you know, as a physical therapist, always taking them through movements to help with the nervous system. And the, the videos that come with this program, all the movements are really great for your nervous system. And it's also great for fixing and helping you prevent any like back pain, shoulder pain, nervous pain. It's all functional in nature. It's helping you move the way you're designed to move. Uh, all right, we've got a thumbs up from Pendra. Wonderful. Let's see, we've got any other questions. I got distracted. So, okay, so Pendra, you wanna lose, lose some, uh, another 20? You can do it. You can absolutely do it. All right, we've got some people. Okay, well, I think that might be it. Maybe one last question here. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, everybody. And wait, 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 one last chat. I'm looking forward to all the benefits from your program. Wonderful, Fran. You know what I'm looking forward to, Fran? I'm looking forward to seeing you um, in November, first day of November, and, and posting a picture in the chat and telling us about how, how awesome your previous 30 days were. That would be uh, amazing and, and, and be wonderful. I would love to see that. So you're so welcome. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, Leanne. And uh, I think that's it. Um, all right. So Everyone, thank you all for watching and have a wonderful evening. Yoo